Hi everyone, I'm Rachel and I'm going to be talking about German evolutionary biologist August Weissmann. Weissmann's most notably known for developing the revolutionary idea that traits are heritable and they're passed down through germ cells from the parent to the offspring. Born January 17th in Frankfurt, Germany to an upper middle class family, Weissmann had an appreciation for nature from a very young age and frequently went into the countryside to collect plants and insects. His hobby was also amplified by his music teacher who taught him how to collect caterpillars and other insects. Weissmann's family dissuaded him from studying natural history, so instead he studied medicine from 1852 to 1856 at the University of Göttingen. Afterwards, he worked as a hospital assistant and then a chemist intern, during which time he published two prize-winning articles about hippuric acid and salt content in the Baltic. In 1867, Weissmann married Maria Dorothea Gruber, with whom he had four daughters and one son, Julius Weissmann, who grew up to become a famous composer. Marie died in 1886, but Weissmann remarried at the age of 60 in the mid-1890s to Willem Tess, which lasted six years. In 1861, Weissmann briefly studied factors including natural selection he thought could play a role in the ontogeny and morphology of various animals, with Rudolf Lockhart at the University of Gessen. He described this as one of the most important times in his life, and eventually dedicated the germplasm to Lockhart in 1892. A brief visit to the scenic Freiburg in Brisgau made quite an impression on Weissmann, so in 1863 he joined the university's medical staff, where he taught comparative anatomy and zoology. In 1867, he became the founding director of the university's zoological institute till his retirement in 1912. Weissmann started his work at Freiburg by studying insect metamorphosis and hydrozoa cells. He studied how environmental factors like temperature could cause variations in butterfly wings, and also carried out similar studies regarding caterpillar markings and the metamorphosis of axolotls, which are published in studies on the theory of descent. In 1864, Weissmann began developing eyesight problems, which were so severe his wife would often have to aid in his experimental and observational studies. By 1884, Weissmann's eye issues forced him to give up microscopy work for good, and instead he turned to studying biological theory. Weissmann read Darwin's On the Origin of Species in 1861, and adapted evolutionary theory. He gave his first lecture on this in 1868, discussing the roles of natural and sexual selection play in speciation. He frequently argued this idea with Moritz Wagner, as Wagner felt geographic isolation was also an important factor. Weissmann began his revolutionary work on germ cells in 1878 by studying the formation of germ cells in hydrozoa. He also did work on Cladocera, a species of water flea, studying a form of asexual reproduction called parthenogenesis, in which an egg is able to develop into a new individual without fertilization. Beginning in 1881, Weissmann wrote a series of essays regarding heredity that were published in 1889 in Essays upon Heredity and Kindred Biological Problems. Here he covered the idea of senescence in the context of natural selection, acquired characteristics, and also first mentioned his germplasm theory. Weissmann theorized that germplasm, found in germ cells rather than somatic cells, was a substance in the nuclei of multicellular organisms that contain hereditary material to be passed down. He also said changes to somatic cells that occur in an individual's lifetime don't affect the hereditary material in these germ cells. Lamarck's theory on the inheritance of acquired characteristics was widely accepted, claiming that changes acquired during one's lifetime can be passed to offspring. Following his germplasm research, Weissmann publicly challenged this, first in a lecture in 1883 where he used non-reproductive casts of ants, which can't be explained by Lamarck's theory. In 1887, Weissmann performed mutilation experiments where the tails of 68 mice were artificially removed. Out of 901 mice over five generations, not a single one was born without a tail or even abnormalities like a shorter tail, which finally disproved Lamarck's disuse of an organ theory and aligned with Weissmann's germplasm theory. The reason for this experiment was to disprove claims from earlier experiments falsely backing up Lamarck's claims, like stating mutilated cats yielded offspring without tails. Weissmann said there is no reliable evidence for these claims, since there was no proof of mutilated parents, and these abnormalities could have resulted from a mutated gene. Furthermore, in the germplasm, Weissmann coined the terms biforce, determinants, ids, and idents, which represent germplasm on four levels of hierarchy. Idents correspond to chromosomes, which carried ids, which he thought were scattered into different cells during development. He also proposed that idents were halved, so half came from the mother, half from the father. In 1890, Weissmann was the first to tie in the importance of meiosis when it comes to inheritance and reproduction. He discovered that two divisions were necessary for one diploid cell to transform to four haploid cells. This process is used to form sperm and egg cells, and we now refer to it as meiosis 1 and 2. In 1896, Weissmann proposed the theory of germinal selection where he stated variations in individuals resulted from different combos of determinants in germ cells, with stronger determinants outcompeting weaker ones. 
for example, the loss of eyes in blind cavefish since determinants that formed eyes were selected against. In his writing on the justification of Darwin's theory, Weissman compared evolution to creationism and explained the many inconsistencies with biological fact with creationism that can be explained by evolution. Weissman accepted evolution as sheer undisputable fact and an important factor in his work with inheritance. Weissman is one of the most distinguished evolutionary biologists following Darwin and Wallace. He definitively disproved Lamarck's acquired inheritance theory and paved the way for future discoveries through his groundbreaking germplasm work on meiosis and inheritance, all while citing evolution as the reason behind these biological phenomena.